Hi, welcome to my channel. Come join me on a typical day living in my van. It's my day off, so I'm going to be spending most of it in nature and surrounded by books. So three things, I wish I would have known about living in a van before I started living in a van or things that I've discovered along the way. So number one, it's like my epitome of living in my own space because every square inch is personally curated by me. Like I chose every single thing and it's all a reflection of myself. So that's really cool. It's not like an apartment. I mean, you can custom make a house, but um, yeah, it's the most like authentic home I've had. And number two is that like it's my normal now, but to everybody else, it's not normal. So they have a lot of questions. So just getting used to answering the typical like, where do you park, where do you shower, all the general questions that people typically ask. And number three is that it drastically changes my perspective on future homes. Like I'm almost three years in now and I'm gonna park with a bunch of dogs. <laughs> but at three years in the next decade, I am going to keep my van. So as of right now, it's all I can foresee in the near future. Um, I do want to eventually live on the water as well, but from this point forward, a traditional home just won't feel genuine or authentic for me personally. After having a van life experience, I just feel like it'd be not authentic to my lifestyle, who I am, so it, I didn't expect that change. I thought maybe I'd try it out for a year, and here we are, are almost three years later, so. It is, it is slightly addicting. One huge benefit, in my opinion, of the lifestyle that I'm in with my van is it really promotes getting outside in nature because I can't just hermit away with my air conditioning inside. I am almost forced to explore and find different outlets to spend my free time. So one of my favorite spots is the beach. I am in a personal relationship with the ocean, so I will always love spending time with her. And a second favorite is definitely finding really cool parks. Um, the more peaceful, the better for me because I am obsessed with books and reading, clearly. So I have a handful of parks that I have fallen in love with. I refuse to live locked away in the orderly house of reasons and proofs. The world I live in and believe in is wider than that. And anyway, what's wrong with maybe? You wouldn't believe what once or twice I've seen. I'll just tell you this. Only if there are angels in your head will you ever possibly see one. But like in this video, we're going to get a library tour. So on door number one, I have all my spiritual books. So this one is hiding. I will post a picture of it, but it's one of my favorite books. Um, it's called You Are a Goddess. She's really tucked in there, but I've read it. I've listened to it multiple times. Sophie Bradshaw, I think she's from the UK, she's amazing. She goes over all like the divine feminine goddesses. So if that's something you're interested in, there's a great place for me to start. 
um, The Alchemist, a classic. I recommend this book to literally everyone. It's a pretty short read and I think it applies to like almost everyone's life or at least the people that I encounter that are on the great adventure of the human experience. So The Alchemist, Paulo Coelho, if you don't know his story, I highly encourage you to research because it makes me laugh every single time. I love him. Uh, Parahamsa Yogananda is an ascended master and this book was sitting on my nightstand for years and I was like, oh, I need to read this six, seven hundred page autobiography. It's the autobiography of a yogi, but um, he is just, I read it at the perfect time that I needed to read it because no one else had a similar experience that I knew of and he wrote it beautifully in a poetry which is like the language of my soul so it was perfect timing when this book finally came into my awareness and ironically we almost share the same birthday i think he's january 5th or he could be the 6th i'll have to double check so yeah love him and then these are some journals that i made on amazon so if you have any requests i uh, hop on canva and make some personalized little journals because I got sick of shopping at Michael's and the generic ones. Um, but behind that is Siddhartha and one of my favorite YouTubers wrote a book. And spiritual books continued a little bit with poetry. So Roque, it, I always picture it because I think he's German, but his poetry like makes me cry every time. So if you're in the mood for some very like deep soulful poetry. He is definitely a person. Um, I miss St. Vincent Millay, Billy Collins, Khalil Gibran also <laughs> is my birthday twin for real and this book found me at a coffee shop with a very special note in it and I, I literally was bawling. It was so synchronistic and perfect so this book will probably be with me for life so I love it so much. And these two are my books that I created during the last three years of poetry that was really healing for me. So yeah, and speaking of creating books, I basically took this fat stack of journals, they've probably seen better days, and um, started writing poetry from my experiences. So I have to like crawl through my van space to get to my other bookshelf. Um, these are some favorites that I've just accumulated over the years. Um, Oscar Wilde. I was in Poland, which my family is part a little bit Polish. And I was thinking in my brain that I wanted to read an Oscar Wilde book. And within the hour at my hostel, an Oscar Wilde book magically appeared like almost right by my bunk. So again, it was meant to be. These books have a common theme that they're very synchronistic in the way that they <laughs> turn up in my life. Um, the Stoic Philosophy of Seneca. I think I stole this from my brother, <laughs> Los Santo. The Phantom Tollbooth is a classic. It's like technically you know, like little kids or um, young adult, but I love it. It's kind of topsy-turvy like Alice in Wonderland, but it has a really good meaning. And The Brave New World, Aldous Huxley. Shout out to my three-year-old bestie Josie, it's also her favorite. But yeah, it's just very trippy, trippy read that I love, so. And The Song of Achilles, Seen Better Days, but this helps keep my privacy window. Um, Song of Achilles is just a classic. I tore my hair up because I'm like dying of heat. I can't handle August apparently. But my last little book storage area is my macrame. So this is my to be read. Actually, I read the top one, but yeah. I have some in here that I still need to read. And then two that were tucked away in there are some of my faves. I'm halfway through Carl Jung's Red Book. And apparently it wasn't supposed to be published. So it's kind of like secret knowledge so i'm halfway through that one it's a little dense but anything carl young puts out into the world i guess he didn't even put this one out i think they just published it after posthumously or whatever so um yeah love that one so far and fernando pessoa from my last video i was on the hunt again very synchronistic i went to this really really cute place in london i'll have to post a video of it if you ever go it's the I think the book barge 
I'll have to remember the name, but it's so precious. It's basically a boat on the water that has books. And of course it had my book that I was looking for. So yeah, I love it. He's um, Portuguese and it's very philosophical, a little odd, but we like, you know, the weirder the better. So, but it, I don't know, it's very poignant. He has a lot of, he's a lot of good philosophical points. So Fernando's where it's at. But those are all my books so far. I do kind of like swap them in and out. Oh, one of my favorite books, hang on, last one, is um, Thanks from the Very Hungry Caterpillar. I used to teach and one of my students' parents gave that to me at the last day of school because I taught all three of her boys. So that one's really special and has cute little notes inside. But yeah, so my books are all very like either sentimental, synchronistic, or just all-time faves. So if they're in the van, they're probably here for a reason because I have very limited space. That's my only complaint. Like maybe if I was, you know, could go back in time, maybe I would add like another bookshelf thing but it's like do you need all the books I kind of like rotating them through you know so one day I'm gonna have my dream library of all my hardcover faves my thousand favorite books but yep so that's my library tour in my van okay so I'm trying to be better about learning the names of the trees and the flowers and all the nature things that I can but this one is kind of baffling me I tried looking it up so it was like a cucumber tree and then another one had a really weird name but there's some really interesting like sap that's coming out of it and this it has like a I don't even know what that vine is why is it fuzzy why is it fuzzy so yeah that one is look at it so interesting. So yeah, this is my cucumber tree. This one looks more identifiable, so... Okay, so this guy I'm more familiar with. He's an elm. Very elm vibes. So, yeah, we see the bark that looks like this. The leaves are... Um, Kind of out of my reach right now, but and they've been looks like eaten a lot by the butterflies or somebody. Somebody's been munching on those. So it's one of my favorite spots because I get my trays all to myself. So after being on a metal tube all day in the sky, it feels really good to walk through nature and be one with Mama Gaia again. Not that we don't love the air and the sky, but it just feels good to be grounded every once in a while. So, oh, oh, good thing I put my Tevas on in the west. My foot would have been a sad day. Sad day, my toes have seen enough trauma, so. Yeah, but this is my uh, daily rejuvenating routine, waiting to see where I'm flying to tomorrow. But in the meantime, I try to just get, oh, the leaves are already falling. Sorry, I try to get as much nature in between flying as possible. So I think it's good for the mental health, spiritual well-being all around. Just feels freaking amazing. So I'm about to find some shade because it is, like I said, very hot and go lay under a tree and contemplate my life, so yeah.